Let me read to you a passage from the second chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 22 to 35. It's the Gospel for the fifth day in the octave of Christmas. St. Luke writes, When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. That's from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 35. And what does it suggest to us? Well, one of the things that Luke is obviously at pains to make clear is that both before and immediately after the birth of Jesus, it was revealed from on high that the child Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah. The angel had revealed this and other things about the child to Mary and in the Gospel of St. Matthew to Joseph prior to his birth. Immediately after his birth, heaven revealed the birth of the Messiah to the Jewish shepherds keeping watch in the hills and also to the distant pagan magi of the east. Now once again, the Holy Spirit reveals to a chosen one the identity of the child. Mary and Joseph bring the child to the temple to observe the requirements of the law in respect to their newly born male child. The Holy Spirit comes upon Simeon, who dwells in Jerusalem. He was a holy man and epitomized the best of the chosen people, awaiting with expectation and gratitude the coming of the Messiah. Mysteriously, it had been revealed to him that he would in fact see the Messiah with his own eyes. And now the moment has come. He is led to the Holy Family, bearing their inestimable treasure in their arms. Simeon comes towards them. He stops and exulting with gratitude and praise gently takes the child into his arms. And then, inspired by the Holy Spirit who had been leading him, he utters a prophecy. The child is the Saviour whom God has prepared. He is the Saviour of the nations and the glory of Israel. That is the essential utterance and it revealed the joy of heaven at what was happening. A Saviour has come, 
a light who will reveal God to the world. There is no one like him. But there is a further prophecy, a prophecy that hints at the kind of path this Saviour will tread. It will not be a road of conquest after conquest, acclaim after acclaim. Rather, it will be marked by contradiction and opposition. And this will result in many rising with him and others falling because of him. Profound sorrow and stress was coming, and his mother will share in it in the depths of her soul. The hint is that Joseph will not see that day. So in our passage today, St. Luke reports obviously his ultimate source of information is the mother of the child. He reports that certain things were revealed about the child soon after his birth. Prophecies were uttered about him and they celebrated the arrival of this child. They also served to enlighten his holy parents. Both Mary and Joseph wondered at what Simeon was saying. They marvelled. They were giving it their utmost attention, with hearts and minds open to the fullest in a holy wonder. It was confirming what had been revealed to them already before the birth of the child and this provided more divine light. The child will be a saviour to the nations, the nations of the world, as well as being the glory of the chosen people. More ominously, and perhaps this was a very new element in what had been revealed to them to this point, the dark clouds of suffering for the child was being intimated. There will be terrible stress, sharp contradiction, and a sword that will pierce. The path of the child will be one of sorrow, and those who are intimately involved with him, epitomized in his holy mother, will share in this suffering. A sword will pierce her soul. Inasmuch as during his public ministry, our Lord said that those who do the will of his father in heaven, are his mother and sister and brother, then the sword that pierces the soul of the virgin mother will also pierce their souls too. It is the sword that is Christ's cross, the lance that pierced his side, the crown that pierced his head. Simeon's prophecy reveals to Mary and Joseph that the great servant of Yahweh that they bear in their arms and whom they will raise during the years ahead is a suffering servant. The suffering servant spoken of by the prophet. He would do his work by suffering and those who are united to him will suffer with him. In a sense, Luke is telling us that at the very beginning of Christ's life, his laborious and yet victorious path was foretold. Not all details were revealed, of course, but enough for the faith of Mary and Joseph to be exercised. Let us place ourselves in the Gospel scene today, in the midst of this holy company. How holy is this company! We have before us the child of the nations, God himself become man in order to make all things new. He will be the saviour of the world and he will save by his obedient suffering. How great the mystery! Life was coming and it would spring forth from death. Around this child are Mary and Joseph and Simeon. Let us resolve to keep close to Christ and to tread his path.